Welcome to the Video Insiders Podcast. I'm Carlos Pacheco. And I'm Tom Martin. And we are two very uh, old, uh, grizzled uh, YouTube veterans, but not in the traditional YouTuber uh, sense. We're more of a behind the scenes type of uh, veterans. And that's exactly what we're going to be speaking about today, actually. Yeah, exactly. Tom, feels like it's been a while. Um, people don't know this, but you know, we recorded it. We we try to record every week to, to back up some of, some of our episodes. But Tom's been gone for the past couple of weeks, so we're sort of I've catching been up. Been gone. Yeah, I um, took some time to have family vacation, uh, and when I have family vacation, I'm fully out of office. Don't check any emails. Um, so unless you've got my phone number. Uh, you're not going to find me. So yeah, really nice to have some time, not answering emails, not doing client work, not doing anything. Uh, my only experience of YouTube was watching my daily soccer update video, which I watch every single day. Um, and that was it. So that's perfect. And then I was at a conference last week. Um, but now very much heads down, uh, back to the grindstone of client work and my other YouTube related ness. Nice. Nice. And yourself? I've been more, you know, still working. We're not taking any uh, real holidays this this summer. We've got something planned more in September. But uh, yeah, just been keeping busy. Uh, We have a very, very, very old dog, our pug, which is actually a a viral. (laughs) He was he was once a a a Vine star. He went viral many years ago uh, when Vine started. Anyways, he's he's sixteen now, so he's very, very old and become extremely, you know, like uh, time consuming. So that that's one of the things that's keeping us busy from physio to, you know, keeping just keeping him comfortable and stuff like that and just making sure his life is, is good. Uh, yeah. Other than that, you know, work, uh, work is work and uh, just random randomness uh, of life uh, that's been happening right now, I would say. Uh, um, and I don't know if you're feeling it, but I'm feeling a little FOMO. Um, as, uh, we're talking, we're recording right now, VidCon's going in is, is kicking off and I'm seeing everybody, uh, jumping in and, and sort of like f- flying in and talking about like exciting being there. And one of the things we've had in the past talk about is, you know, is VidCon worth it? And, uh, for me this year isn't, it's not what I do for a living is not really, uh, you know, I don't YouTube, I don't, which we'll talk later about, but, um, yeah, I just, it, but it's still, you know, it's one of those things where um, it's still a fun, fun event to go to and you still want to go to and sort of connect with the people you identify with. Yeah, I was really on the fence. I had a very good opportunity to go out there, but I'd left it a little bit late to try and secure a speaking opportunity. And for me, really, that's what tipped me over the edge of not going because it's much less likely that I will get business directly from the uh, conference if I'm not speaking. Um, And so it probably would make it at best like a break even kind of trip. And even though I'm missing out, you know, being away for the last two weeks, it meant that I'd be out for another week way behind on other stuff. So I probably would like to go next year because it's been quite a few years now since I've been to the Anaheim VidCon, but, it was announced quite recently and since we last recorded that there's going to be a VidCon Mexico next year. So I'm absolutely putting all of my eggs into trying to get a speaking slot oh, in wow, Mexico. Wow. Yeah, Mexico sounds interesting. That The Latin American market is has definitely been booming over the last uh, few years. I even remember, you know, considering it back or looking at it back in my uh, Just for Laughs days. And a meeting with like a an MCN that specialized in that in that market, and I thought that was so smart, awesome. So let's you know first off thank our sponsor. The reason we are able to make this podcast, this wonderful podcast, TubeBuddy, the ultimate tool for creators to streamline their daily workflow on YouTube, allowing more time to make great content for brands to help reduce busy work and focus on what matters, growing your business on YouTube, for agencies to help manage multiple client channels, and for networks, which gives partners the tools for success and an attractive incentive for recruiters. Very professional. And of course, you can get, uh, you can sign up to multiple channels at once and also get a unique 
uh, an exclusive Video Insiders discount by visiting www.videoinsiders.fm forward slash Tube Buddy. Uh, and I've seen a lot of the Tube Buddy gang having lots of fun over in uh, Anaheim for VidCon again. So causing yep. a lot of FOMO over here. Uh, a lot of the Tube Buddy gang are what I would class as uh, YouTube experts. Uh, who teach people how to do YouTube better on YouTube. And this is exactly uh, what we're going to be talking about today because it's almost, you know, the the elephant in the room as, you know, two <laughs> grizzled veterans like us, Carlos. Why are we not following that path of the YouTube expert on YouTube teaching people how to do YouTube Carlos, I'd love to start off by asking, like, what are your reasons for this? Or, you know, have you had any attempts? Have you had like a burgeoning video career that fizzled out? Or what what is your experience so far of uh, being on camera? Well, we say on I just naturally never thought I would be, uh, in, you know, sort of like in front of the camera. And I've been uh, on a few examples. I remember I did a few videos, um, I think at least one or one video um, on one of the, the gags, uh, Just for Laughs uh, side channels, where I was just doing the behind the scenes type of thing. And uh, you know, th- there are a bunch of reasons. I'm just a very shy person in general. I'm a- an introvert. And I know that's, that's a reason that's many, what many YouTubers are, you know, like it's, it's funny, like I am giving these excuses, but at the same time, it's like, for me, I just never uh, had that, you know, I've never been able to sort of get past that. And yes, I have tried. I've done a couple of things. Um, you know, I, me and uh, my wife are big fans of going to breakfast. So I did a breakfast vlog a couple of years ago. But, you know, within, I would say, half a dozen episodes, I got bored. And I was like, okay, well, this is already repetitive and I'm, I'm just not there. And then, you know, I've experimented with like videos about, you know, installing things, product specific videos. Um, you know, whenever I've gotten like, uh, I think I did a, I've actually been successful in certain videos where I bought a Casper bed for our dogs (laughs) and, uh, and I just, you know, just the quick unboxing and, you know, my wife also is, uh, is a YouTuber. So, you know, I felt at the time that it's like, you know what, you know, I'd rather not have two YouTubers in the house. And, you know, I've been in a few of her videos as well. Again, it's just one of these things where whenever I, I thought I could do something, I felt that would, first off, the, 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 the vertical that I'd be interested in going felt a little saturated. And I was like, I don't really have a different voice for it. But I know it's sort of like a cap out. Like, I'm, it's one of those things where I just have a mental, physical block that prevents me from going beyond, you know, sort of like flipping that switch and recording something and and giving advice or I'm not interested in vlogging my life. I don't feel like I add much to the conversation. And again, this is my sort of like, you know, admitted insecurities. But at the same time, like I look at people like uh, Matt uh, Gillen, he was one of those guys that I felt like sort of I identified with in terms of like not being in front of the camera. And then in the last year, he's been in front of the camera. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> and he's he's making great content. Yeah, and he's one of the reasons that we wanted to talk about this episode. So he's recently launched uh, a YouTube channel. Uh, you can check that out. It's uh, Little Monster. You you search that, you'll find it. Uh, and also, uh, I'm not sure how well you know him or not, but a good friend of mine, Anthony Ambrose, who's been around like the speaking circuit for a long time and the podcast circuit, he recently took the step to get in front of camera and teach. Uh, you know, like YouTube uh, tips and stuff. So this is what kind of uh, made me even m- want to speak about it, uh, even more so. Uh, but another question for you, Carlos, is do you think that not having a public on YouTube presence or at least a channel that you can kind of point to as your own has been a hindrance to you in your business in any way? Are people, you know, coming to you and saying, well, you know, no, I- yeah, well, you're giving me you're giving me this advice. Where's your channel? You know. <laughs> oh no. I... What what do you what would you say to the people that say you know those those who can do it and those who can't teach? What's the answer to that? Yeah, wait a minute. I do have a channel. Um, a, I do have a wonderful amount of. Uh, I have a 
huge 800 subscribers on it. And, uh, you know, I have like, uh, something like, you know, 50 videos or something. Uh, like I said, I've had a couple of videos that are successful. I actually did a video again, again, I've done videos specifically when I do product stuff, whenever I'm like, you know, just buy a specific product that I'm like, Oh, I'm interested in making a little video about, but my jobs, uh, the jobs I've had have, have helped, uh, sort of built my reputation in terms of space. Like, you know, the, the channels I built for, for just for laughs, the channels I built for boat rocker media, the trophies, <laughs> you know, like all that sort of stuff. And also being sort of vocal online in terms of this space, you know, making the connections and, you know, within the community and, uh, working with creators and helping creators in general. So that's, where I was able to sort of like still get work, uh, people come me for come at me for advice, but you know, again, this is one of those things where you know I I've changed uh, I've you know pivoted a little bit of my career back to the marketing space. In the marketing space, you can't really focus on one platform. So that sort of side of the business is, is a little, well, sort of side of my, my career is a little bit like lesser these days, but I do think, you know, one of the reasons I was successful, uh, when I jumped into the world of YouTube and understood it pretty quickly is because I had a, a marketing background and I understood what the marketers, uh, were looking for and, um, how they approached the space. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I don't feel like I have a, a definite reason and I don't think I have a, a reason that's out of the ordinary for not making YouTube videos. Part of me doesn't want, you know, I'm a very open person, but at the same time, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to bring, not that I would make a dramatic <laughs> YouTube channel, but you know, it's not always a positive thing to, to have a, a YouTube channel. So, um, yeah, uh, it's. I don't feel like I have a focused answer. I feel like it's a bunch of things and a bunch of reasons. I'm happy with the way things are. I do get once in a while. I do get a little bit of a FOMO of like, oh, why can't I make, you know, videos for a living and stuff like that. Then I like. Then I look at how much money, you know, how much time it takes to to build that channel, and I'm like, yeah, I sort of have a job that you know pays the bills right now, so I'm gonna do that. And again, that's. I, I, uh, that's a cop out. I totally admit it. It's a cop out because uh, it's not what I tell my clients. I say it's a long play and all that sort of stuff. I just, you know, if I had to point out one reason, I would say it's uh, full on insecurity and full on uh, feeling like I, I'm not really, I can't add more to the to the landscape that's not already there. And if let's say we stripped away your insecurities and time was no money result time was no issue money was no issue what would you just out of purely for my own curiosity what what would you make a youtube channel about oh um if you could just click your fingers and you had like a team and a studio and oh man i would make a not specifically a technology focused channel but a vertically you know within a specific space uh of the technology space like meaning when i say technology i mean like uh, consumer technology, like, you know, uh, you think of like mm -hmm. people making the phone videos and stuff like that, but I would make a, a channel based on a specific vertical within that technology, uh, you know, be it like washing machines, <laughs> you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, no, but it, it, you laugh, but those are, those are like products that nobody, nobody can really make. Nobody has done videos about. All right. And nobody, you know, obviously because they're so big, it's tough for a YouTube and YouTuber to get excited about that. And I'm, admittedly not excited about washing machines but i think that's sort of my point is like there's a there's a whole vertical of like consumer level products out there that aren't being serviced online there's there's a lot of industries out there beyond just telephones and laptops and 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 tvs and and one of the reasons i sort of like struggle with that is also like I'm also not passionate about that. So it's, it's one of those things where there's a lack of passion for me for, for certain subjects that I'm like, yeah, that would be like, if I would have an idea for a YouTube channel, I would do it. And I'm like, but I'm not passionate enough to that for that industry to sort of like really embrace it. And that's what's held me off from like actually doing these videos. Yeah. It, it makes perfect sense in terms of opportunity. I'm not sure if, Money was no object whether I'd be making videos about washing machines, but <laughs> each man to their own. That was just um, an example. I do, yeah, you know, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> no, but like uh, I think of, I think my, both myself and the audience have learned a lot about you in that <laughs> one answer, Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, when you have a really good washing machine, it you know makes life easier. life is good. Life yes. is. I agree. I agree. Yes. So how about you, Tom? Like, uh, I know you've made videos, you've done uh, educational videos. You even had a full month of daily vlogging, which I was completely impressed with. Not daily vlogging. Uh, was it, do you, do you consider that vlogging? No, no uh, daily video, but not daily videos. Yeah, vlog, exactly. yeah. yeah. So I never, ever, 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 ever intended to be on camera on YouTube. I started my YouTube educational website, uh, FAQTube.tv that still exists, but I haven't updated it for over a year now. I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute, why I don't update it anymore. Uh, but I, I was blogging primarily and getting a decent amount of traffic. It really helped me to raise my profile in the industry. So very, very much glad that I did, did that. It taught me a lot of lessons, but I realized it needed video, uh, but I still wasn't prepared to be on camera. So I was just doing screen recording videos without showing my face or anything like that. I just did not have the confidence to be on camera, nor any idea how to film myself um, at all, really. So just doing screen capture videos. And then my first uh, experience of being on camera was actually nothing to do with FAQ Tube. It was actually at work while I was at work for the BBC, and we were running uh, a host of YouTube channels, one of which was like a general kind of entertainment channel. Uh, and we were doing clips of TV shows, but it kind of wasn't going anywhere fast. And we realized that we needed to do something a little bit edgier uh, and do some original content. And what we'd done previously was kind of high end, high budget stuff, which wasn't really cutting through. So I said, look, we just need to, you know, act like a startup. We need to throw a load of like cheap stuff up and see what sticks and find a good format. Um, and so we just kind of, I just rallied everyone, just said, like, get out your desks, come and huddle over here, we're going to have a quick chat. And I was like, come on, we just need to film something. We need to just, you know, there's a lot of really smart, funny, creative people in this group, not me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, surely between us, we can find a YouTube format. Let's not think like TV company, let's think of something we could film in our bedrooms. And we came up with the idea of uh, what became uh, a, where a short series of videos called um, Delete History, which was kind of a comedic look at kind of funny internet mm -hmm. culture. And so we wrote a script. I think it was like 10 clickbait titles you wouldn't believe or something like that. It was, you know, tongue, tongue in cheek commentary on kind of clickbait. So we wrote a script. I thought it was really good. And then I said, every single person in this team is going to do a pilot episode and whoever is the best presenter is going to present it for real. And we're going to shoot like seven episodes. Um, so we all did a run through the best person would be the presenter, but the person who was the best <laughs> wouldn't do it. <laughs> so I said, all right, fine, I'm going to do it. Uh, and I was, I was probably second best. So, you know, it's fair enough. Never filmed anything before never been on camera, no idea how to present, but I just did it. I wrote about seven scripts with a little bit of help, uh, a little bit of editing help, a little bit of guidance, uh, really good kind of, uh, director who was helping me through the script and keeping my energy up and making sure I was standing in the right place and looking down the lens and stuff like that. And, um, <laughs> it was really good. I think it was really, 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 really good. I'm still so, so proud of every single one of those videos. Uh, I haven't watched them for a few years, so I'm not sure how well they've, they've held up over time. But uh, I can really remember the day when we released our first one and I shared it on Facebook. And it's the first time any of my friends and family had ever seen me doing anything like that. It's the first time I'd seen myself. And I was just sh like shivering, waiting for the first like troll comment. But it was really well received. Everyone was like really encouraging, you know, no really bad comments, uh, in from the public. Uh, and some of those videos got like 40, 50,000 views. And, uh, yeah, I don't you know if I, maybe I'll tweet it. Maybe I'll make like a pin tweet so you guys can find it. Or if you search like Tom Martin, delete history, something like that, or BBC Brit delete history, you'll find it. But yeah, I, I was really proud of it. And then I kind of got the bug for it. It's kind of like, yeah, I could do this. 
it's not that hard. But then soon realize that, oh, yeah, it's very different when you've got access to like the YouTube space and a professional team that know what they're doing and they edit it all for you and all that kind of stuff. So I then decided that I was going to make some videos for FAQ YouTube with me on camera. Again, I think the content was great, but my mm. presenting was bad. They looked absolutely awful. And then I kind of just gave up because I just wasn't happy with them. Had another shot later on. Um, again, wasn't super, super great. And then when I f- quit the corporate world, I was like, that's it. I've got to do it now. So I invested in a really nice camera, full lighting setup, the whole shebang. Mm-hmm. Filmed some videos. They actually looked really nice, I thought, especially for like someone with no technical experience self-shooting. Uh, and then I decided that I was going to do veda v-e-d-a vlog every day in august or video every day in august and i did 31 videos in 30 day 31 days it nearly killed me but i did it but it really didn't do anything for my business and it really mm-hmm. or the channel for that matter and it really made me sit up and question why i was making those videos why i was running that business entirely so not just why i was running uh that website but why was i targeting the beginners market on youtube because Mm faq was pretty much aimed at beginners and i realized that to compete with the likes of daryl eve tim schmoyer nick nimin roberto blake now these people were doing video full-time uh and i just couldn't afford to do video full-time because i had you know consulting work and client work to do that would pay the bills and i also didn't really have the drive that they would have had to get to where they are in terms of being on YouTube all the time and coming up with the same ideas, different ideas. And um, I also realized really that all the years I'd spent building FAQ YouTube, which was at least four or so years, it really wasn't paying off to be focusing on the beginner's market. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't spend a lot of money. uh, They don't want to invest. And I could make more money than I'd ever made on FAQ tube by servicing one client for one day who are the people that weren't beginners, people that had big companies or big creators and I could charge thousands and more than make up for selling, you know, a hundred eBooks or whatever it may be to beginners. So I made a conscious decision that day, pretty much as soon as that Vader series was over that I would totally stop targeting the beginner's market on YouTube and instead target um, the kind of media industry and well-established creators. So I stopped making videos that day. I stopped updating the website that day and pretty much left behind an entire market and everything that I'd worked on for all those years behind me. So um, that was the last time I pretty much uh, I was on camera apart from my course, which isn't on YouTube, but definitely the best decision I ever made totally transformed my business and transformed my life. And, uh, you know, I was able to really focus on high ticket clients and, uh, not trying to, you know, achieve volume, which is what you really need to do if you're going to make a, a kind of business based on a, on a YouTube channel. So, you know, was kind of happy to leave that behind, uh, happy to leave that to, to people like, you know, Nick Nimmy and Daryl Lees and, uh, those guys who I'm good friends with and, uh, you know, I had a new respect for, for what they were doing in like, you know, six hour live streams and new videos every week when pretty much every topic that's ever been discussed about YouTube is, you know, on video in, in, in some way, shape or form. So yeah, I, I, you know, so I, I've kind of, there are, there are videos still up, which I'm working on the process of taking down and probably going to take down the website. If not, uh, try and sell it off maybe. So if anyone's interested in a slightly outdated, but, uh, very, very good foundational website about kind of YouTube stuff, then do get in contact. Are you talking about like back to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you mean the, the, the channel, the website, everything, okay. the video assets, whatever it may be. Uh, I mean, I think, I think you should just leave them there and just have, you know, like I've told you this before. I'm like, I think you should just like, you know, rename the channel, Tom Martin and yeah, potentially. own up, own up to, to that, to that, you know, sort of that experience. And I think it's still, you know, valuable content that can be discovered. It by is, and I think a lot of the articles, particularly on the website are probably better than yeah. 
a lot of stuff that gets taught out there today. I know that the screenshots are like way outdated, but it's still really, really good stuff. And it's a lot of the stuff that went in to form the first version of my book. So really good stuff. Um, I am also talking to someone to potentially take over that brand and become the face of that brand and let it live on just without me uh, attached to it. So we'll see. But yeah, it's, you know, I do miss being on video. So I am doing some of that for my kind of community, um, but not, you know, I'm not being the, the YouTube expert on YouTube anymore. It just, to me, it just didn't make sense for me and my business and the amount of time that I've got to dedicate to it. Yeah, you're absolutely right that, you know, uh, for us, the clientele that when the clients that we deal with, it, it doesn't make sense. We're, we're not, you know, like it's not, we're, we're not serving the, the beginner market and beginner market is such a, not really a moneymaker market for, uh, for an entrepreneur out there. And you need a lot of volume to sort of like do that. And even though, you know, you look at the Daryl Eves, it's like his YouTube channel is not where he makes his money. Like, I mean, it's, no. it's a marketing platform for him. You know, but he has a full-on production company and he's, you know, doing videos for brands and, and creators and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I think it totally makes sense. You know, for me, you know, while we're talking, while you were talking, I was sort of going over my channel. And I was realized, like, I have a good, like, you know, 30, you know, 40 videos that have hit, you know, over a thousand views over the years. And, uh, you know, some that I've had. 200,000 views specifically back to the subject of my, uh, viral pug. But, um, <laughs> but like, you know, it, I remember one of the things that opened me up to, uh, YouTube was I used to work for an agency that was serving, uh, Cirque du Soleil in, uh, in Montreal. And I had the chance to, um, go to a sort of like a rehearsal and stuff. Like that, and I recorded it on my phone or I know I had a camera back then. And this is way before, you know, I even knew what YouTuber was, and it's nine years ago, I'm looking at the video now. And I remember the video getting so many views, like, you know, a couple thousand views very quickly. And I'm like, wow, what's happening here? And like, and I realized that at the time, Cirque du Soleil was very secretive and didn't show much of the behind the scenes. And I basically did something that I shouldn't have, but you know, yeah. whatever. They didn't slap my, they didn't slap my wrist. They didn't say anything about it, but I showed it to the client. Not until now. No, but I showed it to the client and the client was like, wow, this is amazing. You know? And I think that's sort of like, you know, that sort of stuff sort of evolved into clients understanding that they need to sort of show their stuff uh, out there. Anyways, that's a sort of uh, a sideline to that. But yeah, I think I identify with a lot of what you said in terms of uh, not making a sense for us and all of the stuff that's already being done by, I would say, our peers in this industry that we just cannot, you know, compete with, I guess, or, you know, I, or don't want to compete with. Yeah, I, I generally don't think I can compete because the drive that it must take to be so consistent in uploading and like the like Nick Nimmin's doing like five hour live streams every Saturday and um, like crazy amount of collaborations and videos and just honing their craft. And you got to have so much drive to do that. And that's just not in me, especially for that channel. If it was a channel of something that I was really passionate about, say, I don't know, Kung Fu movies or my football team or poker or say by the bell, whatever it might be, then I would have the drive to do that mm -hmm. if I had the time. But, I've said before, like teaching people about YouTube is my secret weapon, but it's not my passion. Uh, and so I just don't have the drive to have a channel like that. Um, and when you reach the scale that those guys have reached, then it is, it does make sense because the AdSense is making you money. You can sell t-shirts, you can sell live events. Then you start to get consultancy requests coming in, but that's just not the route I was prepared to take because I just knew that I wouldn't have the drive to do what yeah, those guys yeah, do. That's, that's, that's it's just perfectly said. Uh, it's, it's the passion and, uh, and the drive. And sticking on the subject of like the landscape of YouTube experts, teaching people how to do YouTube on YouTube. What do you think about the current state of, of that market? How, how aware are you even of, you know, the names out there and what they're doing and how they differentiate from each other. You know, I'm aware in terms of like, uh, you know, I know of Nick and I've actually am friends with him on, on Facebook. Not that I've had much of a interaction with him. I just said, you know, 
respect his work and stuff like that. And for the most part, I feel like it's a little stale. A lot of what needs to be said is, is already, has already been said or has been addressed uh, many, many, many times over. I do think that there's always nuances and always sort of new things that, you know, can be updated. Uh, but I guess that's just me for being, you know, sort of like knowing, you know, being always aware of the landscape. Right. And, um, I do, you know, I have seen an ev evolution in terms of like, you know, the way Daryl Eves does his videos nowadays, like he does videos very uh, rarely now, but you know, he focuses on other things or he focuses on events or big news items. The ones that, you know, upload two to three to four times a week. Those are the ones where I'm like, uh, you know, you, you watch one, you watch them all. Basically that's essentially what, what the way I feel. And then at the end of the day, it's more of a, as, as with many YouTubers, it's, it's all about personality and whichever one you identify with or you like more. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, you know, right now my, you know, admittedly the one I, I really enjoy the most is, is Matt, uh, from little monster media because he's bringing a different perspective and a different sort of like, uh, overall sort of strategy type of, uh, perspective to the YouTube landscape, as opposed to like, you know, how to make banners on YouTube or, you know, what's your, you know, what's the base, you know, you know, the 10, 10 favorite tr uh, tips and tricks. I've always been more fascinated about the bigger picture, uh, the optimization in the back end, yeah. uh, where the views are coming from, how things change, the algorithm changes, you know, a little bit more uh, content that's just, you know, less about the surface, more about the the behind the scenes type of thing. So that's, to me, that's my perspective overall. No disrespect to anybody that's doing this. They're doing great work. It's just that for me, as somebody who's been in a business for, you know, close to 10 years, there's nothing out there that, that I need to watch that makes me feel like I've learned something. Yeah, I, I must say that I've really kind of lost touch since kind of leaving FAQ tube behind. And man, I feel like I had such a weight off my shoulder at that point because even though I tried not to, obviously I, I viewed a lot of those guys as my competitors. So I followed every single thing that they did. And, you know, it was like, oh, he's doing that. Okay, she's doing this because I needed to know what the competition was doing. And as soon as I stopped seeing them as my competition, then I stopped following so much what they were doing on YouTube. From a, like a lot of them are still my friends. So I still, you know, still friends on Facebook and I enjoy seeing what they're doing in life. But I definitely feel like I had a massive weight off my shoulder, not thinking, Oh, Oh, they're talking about that this week or he's releasing a course or he's doing a live event or he's got these t-shirts and he's got this community going on. So I definitely feel like I'm, a few steps removed but yeah i've seen you know people really their channels just grow at crazy crazy rates and you know absolute kudos to them what it's taken to do that i really really respect it what i would also say is that there's a lot of and this is probably not so much those kind of upper echelon names that we know but there's kind of a secondary layer of people that have decided they're going to teach people youtube that have zero experience have grown zero channels and have zero basis for the advice that they're given or they've grown kind of one channel before and think that that necessary because it worked for them it's kind of universal advice which is not always the way so i just remember seeing a lot of stuff where i just would feel sorry for the people that kind of took that advice as gospel so if, if there's anyone out there if, hmm, know, you're making me curious as to who uh, you're probably about. not so many people that you would think of so not you know obviously i'm not going to name any names but um <laughs> I, I don't think this is unique to you know youtube experts it's the same for health and fitness experts or financial advice experts or software experts or music experts it's if you're the consumer, then you really need to check the credentials of the person that you're learning from, you know, have they done it repeatedly, yeah. which is a, which is a big reason that I, it was really hard for me to step away from trying to grow that channel because it's like, well, all these other experts have got these big expert channels. Why haven't I, and I actually did mm -hmm. kind of have a client 
potential client that said, well, why don't you have all these subscribers? And uh, even though it was easy for me to justify, well, I just don't have the time to spend on it. Uh, you know, and I've not uploaded for six months. That that one person, you know, that was a, a, a put off for, for them. But in mm -hmm. the long term, I know, you know, I've got lots of clients that wouldn't even care about that because my other credentials are, are, are pretty solid. But, um, you know, the, the kind of people that we know well, we know they're doing a great job. Uh, I have to say, if I had to pick one person, uh, I'd definitely say that, you know, Daryl is the, yeah, is the, is the gold standard for me. He's the one person that I know when I sit down and watch a presentation of his, I'm going to learn something that I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, and I, i really would say that. And also I know that if he says something, I can pretty much trust it. Yeah. Which I wouldn't say for necessarily everyone out there, but yeah, he's, he's the one guy that I would kind of default to as, as the, the OG and, you know, he's doing stuff that he's got a team that are doing some crazy stuff in terms of AI and data analysis and pulling so many strings that, you know, I really look up to Daryl and think he's uh, doing a great, great job. Yeah, he's definitely, uh, he's definitely up the game in, in, in his side of things. So having said all of this, is there a future in which Carlos P is blowing up the the small YouTube screen, whether that's talking <laughs> about YouTube or talking about pugs or brunch or <laughs> washing machines. Is, is that, is that on the cards? Is it something you'd consider? Well, you know, again, I've, you know, I realized I've experimented a lot on the platform. I've vlogged, I've vlogged my, my big move from uh, Montreal to Toronto uh, and it's got a lot of views. I've recorded whenever uh, I remember recording a pair of shoes that I got that were like, you know, just the new shoes and uh, getting many views. And again, for me, it's and and funny enough, I uh, did the mistake of uh, I love I love this because I get so much hate on this video. It's hilarious. So I went to Phil Philadelphia a few years ago and had a Philly cheesesteak. And uh, mm. uh, we didn't, you know, we didn't know there were rules. We ate with we ate one with a fork it, ah. it every day i get hate on that video it's <laughs> hilarious don't come back to philly you know all this stuff and I, I love to troll these people it's hilarious but i guess i i i've always sort of approached the platform as an experimental thing for me um right now i kind of i'm really into like sort of like updating my house with some you know uh, internet of things stuff I did a video about installing my uh, August smart lock. It's a popular video. I did a video. I actually recorded a video a couple of months ago installing light switches, but I've not, not edited. It's in some camera somewhere that I don't know what to do with it. And it's just one of those things that I really enjoy uh, sort of experimenting at this point. I don't see myself making videos about what I do just because uh, it, it's just not really worth it for me. Sometimes I think I should make videos about, you know, running a uh, CMS, but at the same time, it's like, why, you know, what's the point? Yeah. You know, like at the same time, like that, that's not what the clients are, the clients I work with look, even look at, like to me, the clients that I've, that I work with on the YouTube side of things, they, you know, they care about their rights management. They care about like piracy and stuff like that. And which is interesting. Most of them don't even consume YouTube. Like that, that's the hilarious part, right? The clients that actually spend the money and, and pay us often don't even consume, aren't even on a platform or even understand the platform. They're just like, oh, there's a video platform. It's popular. How can you help me? And that's about it, right? So yeah. me being on YouTube is not necessarily going to drive those those clients for me. So to me, it's just going to be another place where I throw up a, you know, a video of, again, I'm looking at all the randomness stuff. Like I've, I recorded myself doing an exercise routine, uh, trying a nap. I recorded myself uh, eating a kajada in, in, uh, in the Azores where my family's from. And I recorded myself riding uh, my bike in the middle of a winter storm in, in Toronto, right? Like th these are all the things that I've just done over the years. And you know, I like the fact that some of them are, you know, have long lives. They just keep getting views and they just keep, you know, like uh, chugging along. It's hard to say that if, I ever, if I'm ever going to jump into some sort of format that I can do, uh, you know, frequently because 
I feel I'd get bored pretty quickly, right? I'm, I'm fascinated by the people who seven, eight years in are still doing the same format. I'm seeing how that doesn't pay off, just sticking to that format. Like, I mean, after a year, I'd, you know, want to sh- just quit. <laughs> so the people that are still doing it for many years and like, it just fascinates me. So that that's, that's where I see myself just experimenting, using the platform for my own little sort of experiments more than anything else. How about yourself? Yeah, well, in the short term, I'm definitely 100 million percent going to have YouTube channels, but they won't have my face anywhere near them and they won't have anything to do with uh, teaching people how to do YouTube. They will just be opportunities that I found that I think I can create content at a price point or cost that I think will help me to see a return on investment. Uh, They will also not be YouTube channels that live in isolation. They will have diverse audiences, diverse income streams, whether that's podcast, website, whatever it may be. But I'm certainly not going to be vlogging anytime soon and certainly not going to have a YouTube channel uh, where I teach people YouTube related stuff. Uh, what I would say in the kind of longer term, once I have my business a bit more, uh, matured and I have people and a team and systems in place where I'm not necessarily needed so much for the day to day, I would love to get back on camera. Uh, maybe just a, a passion project, which isn't really a business. Probably I keep coming back to it all the time is the, my kind of uh, Hong Kong movie channel that I'd love to have <laughs> where I speak about like, you know, top 10 Jackie Chan films from the eighties and top 10 bosses from Kung Fu movies and stuff like that. That'd be a dream for me to do that and have the time to, to spend on something that is just purely a passion project. It doesn't matter if I make too much money on it, but would also be a good case study and something that I just would love to do. And if it meant I got to get like, free stuff and meet some people from the industry and maybe like a free trip or two to Hong Kong. That'd be pretty amazing. So I I do think you will see my face on YouTube again. Um, And also in terms of like collaborations, like when I go to vid summit, I'm certainly going to do some collaborations on other people's channels. So um, yeah, watch this space for this face. (laughs) Yeah. And you made me think about, you made me realize like, you know, one of the things that, you know, I keep again, back to experimenting is, you know, sort of focusing on the stuff I'm passionate about and not really caring about like, you know, what it's doing. And that's something that, you know, I always tell clients and always tell anybody who wants to be on YouTube over the next few months, I'm going to get back to a hobby of mine that I sort of dropped, which was uh, cycling. I'm a total noob when it comes to it. Like I've seen, you know, like I'm sort of jealous to the people that, you know, do these 100 kilometer rides, but you know, I've never owned one of those bikes, but I do love to cycle. So I'm going to sort of start getting into it and maybe I'm going to buy, maybe I'm going to have like my camera with me and just very roughly vlog that just to see how things go and just, you know, share my experience more than anything else. And I think that's, how I like to experiment on the platform more than anything. Yeah. So I think there's a couple of kind of universal lessons here. One is what we just spoke about is that if you want to do YouTube for fun, that's absolutely fine. If you don't care, like a lot of the advice I give is this is what you need to do if you want to have a big audience, but Mm -hmm. you can ignore it if you just want to do what you want and have fun. And I think, you know, for Mm -hmm. a lot of people, it is just a hobby and they just want to put their creations into the world. I think the second kind of universal lesson is, YouTube isn't for everyone. Your business doesn't necessarily need a YouTube channel. Your your personal brand doesn't necessarily need a YouTube channel. And there might be other ways that you and your business can spend that time and money and effort because it is a huge drain to run a YouTube channel consistently for a long time. There may be other better ways for your brand and your business to invest that time, money and effort into other platforms or uh, other types of business development that are going to get a better return on investment because it honestly, it's not for everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it certainly wasn't right for, for my business and, and how I wanted to run it. 
Yep, I think that's uh, that's basically why we don't do YouTube. Yeah, and uh, now I've always got somewhere I can point people to if they <laughs> ask me that question. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, I think that was a really interesting conversation. Uh, thanks again to Chew Buddy. None of these conversations would be possible without you, our favorite YouTube channel management tool. And you can get, uh, don't forget, a exclusive discount by visiting videoinsiders.fm forward slash chew buddy thank you too buddy and also please don't forget to uh subscribe on whatever uh podcatcher you are using right now and please share the episode with somebody you love that loves youtube that wants to understand youtube we really really appreciate it thanks carlos speak to you in the next couple of weeks have a good one 